because that must be very undignified. You have to lie on this table with your feet in the stirrups, and he chucks a sheet over the bottom there and has a little globe. <laughs> so there's this lady lying on the slab there with a bloody piece of the, the sheet over the top, and he's looking inside, and he said, geez, you got a big doors. Geez, you got a big doors. She says, you didn't have to repeat yourself. He said, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> See? And at least one woman laughs, I'm safe. <laughs> anyway. So. <laughs> the Japanese guy that lives behind me continues to remind me of the fact that we are so culturally different in this world. And there's two things about the Japs that I've got a major problem with. First of all, they are productive. <laughs> and I'm a white South African, okay? Secondly, they've got one national culture. We have many cultures. They've got one national food. We haven't even got a national food in this country. It's like saying, cuck, man, what about bulldog, man, of burivors, man, of pop and flace, of poikikos, and some like the other now said, hey, man, what about babuti, man? I said, I'll be a douche, man. That's what I can try because he this, calls his brother. <laughs> so we don't have a national dish. No. We don't. <laughs> the national dish of Japan is sushi or sashimi. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing you eat sushi is another fish. You don't fucking eat raw fish. In fact, they didn't even invent it. Two Jewish guys got together one night and said, how can we open a restaurant without a kitchen? <laughs> yeah. Like a week later, the Japs are killing. Now, I'm not a great fan. As far as I'm concerned, the only difference between sushi and punda is rice. <laughs> Just find one very hard to swallow. But now, <laughs> you do things, <laughs> unless you're with a 120 percenter. We do things at home which we believe are fairly private, like you buy a TV, have a fight with your girlfriend, your wife, redecorate your home. It takes about two, three days before the whole neighborhood knows your business. Right? We often wonder, how do our neighbors find out? Well, it's actually quite simple. Your domestic executive and or your agricultural assistant, right? <laughs> now what they do... They speak to the people in the neighborhood who then speak to the people they work for and that's how the grapevine works. So a few years ago, wallpapered my lounge. Week after that happened, there's a knock at the door. Get up, go to the door, open the door. Standing outside, there's my Japanese neighbor, Mr. Wong. <laughs> it's not his real name, that's a Chinese name. His name's a hell of a lot fucking Wonger than that. I must tell you that, right? <laughs> Never ask a Jap what his name is because he's going to fucking tell you, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> then you're going to try and remember this. So anyway, there he is standing. Mr. Wong said, oh, Mr. Paka. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I said, can I help you? Oh, I'm his alpaca. Last week, uh, you up up your lounge. So I said, well, what about it? Oh, I'm his alpaca. My lounge was the same size as your lounge. So I said, so? Oh, I'm his alpaca. I want a wallpaper on my lounge. Yeah. How many rolls of a wallpaper? Bill Bai! <laughs> well, I bought 15. Oh! Oh, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you very much! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, say thank you, Zoff. But a week later, Sydney, knock at the door. Get up, go to the door, open the door, and standing outside there's Mr. Wong, but I can tell by the body language, this like his voice, eh? It's Mr. Wong. Mr. Paka. Last week, I come to your house. He said, I remember that. I ask you, how many rolls of a wallpaper? You buy the wallpaper in your house. So I remember that as well. Mr. Paka. You told me. You buy a 15 rolls of a wallpaper. He said, so, oh, Mr. Parker. I got uh, 10 rolls over. He said, what's over? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> A lot of yokes here tonight enjoy hunting, okay? Now, I'm not talking about like Friday or Saturday night. I'm talking about getting into the real bush, okay? <laughs> and because uh, let's be honest about it, hunting is a very fair sport. You have a high-powered rifle with a telescopic sight. This buck's got the whole fucking bush. Let's be honest about it. Go. <laughs> but if you want to go and do it in style, and I'm sure they have these things down here in the Eastern Cape, but they certainly have them in the Northern Province or fucking, I don't know what they're calling it this week, but some are up there, okay? <laughs> you can go to these fairly upmarket ranches where they let you loose in the bush. You can go and shoot anything you want to. At the end of the week, they just weigh all the cuck that's dead, and you pay by the kilo. So these three oaks pitch up at one of these places. It's an American, Japanese guy, and an Afrikaans guy. And they go out hunting the first day. And that night, they're standing around the bride talking shit. And the American says, you know, I had a great day's hunting today. Shop yourself a couple of fine kudu and a springbok. What about you? Afrikaans guy says, no, today I've got about four lakh like kudu, a couple of springbok, and a, an elephant. What about you, chinky? Oh, today. Ha <laughs> ha, Oh, today, oh, sure, uh, two buffalo, one giraffe, one rhino. So I carry on cooking, I go to bed. Next morning, out there, go hunting again. That night, they're standing around the bride. An American says, you know, today I got myself two fine kudu and a nice big elephant. What about you? Dutchman says, no, today I got four like a springbok, couple of kudu and a snake. What about you, Chingy? Oh, today, today I got one rhino, I got two buffalo, one airbus. <laughs> so I carry on cooking. <laughs> Got a bed next morning. Had to go hunting again. That night they're standing around the bride. The American says, you know, show myself a nice big lion today. What about you? Off he goes, says, no, today I got about two like a kudu, about four nice springbok and a tortoise. What about you, Chinky? Oh, today. Today I got three right now. I got one buffalo, three airbus. <laughs> Off he goes, says, listen, chinks. This is Northern Transvaal. You shoot fucking animals. Yeah, you leave the other place alone, man. No, 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 Airbus! Airbus! <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> okay. Last story. And this story is because, just so much. Because a lot of people want to know what it is about. How the hell you get some of the jokes and some of the jokes that you bear, the best one you get is people walk up and they say, have you heard this joke? 95 to 100% of them are shit. <laughs> I know this because when I first started doing this as a, for a living, some, I still actually do this to show people how cuck humor was in the bloody early 70s, all right? So they should people walk up and say, this guy went to see a doctor, see a doctor, I've got a piece of soap stuck up my ass. The doctor said, that's life, boy. <laughs> see? Well, another guy went to see a doctor, he said, doctor, I've got a cricket ball stuck on my ass. The doctor said, how's that? <laughs> see, wow. But somebody came up to me a couple of years ago and he told me this joke. The reason why I found, I listened to the joke because the first line was very funny. He said, there were these two cowboys, oh, Jan and Pete. <laughs> so I'm fucking laughing already, okay. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, this, these fucking Dutchmen are lost, bro. <laughs> However, I listened. And he said they were in this western town. And they wanted a dope, but they didn't have any money. So they were, thought they, what they'd do is they'd pull into this bar and they'd go and try and scheme a dope out of the barman. So they go inside there. They said to the barman, barman, who is the dope? And the barman said, hey, jelle geld, because he was also Afrikaans. <laughs> and I said, no, no, we don't have geld. He said, hey, fuck you, you can't get a dope. So they're going to sit in the corner of the bar and they're sitting there trying to scheme, now, how can I get a dope? So about 10 minutes later, this oak walks in and he's got a red Indian's head, just the head by the hair. Walks in, puts it down on the counter like that. And the barman walks over, checks the head, pulls out a bottle of whiskey, swaps it for the head. I walk, picks up his whiskey and walks out. Young sister Pete said, Fucking cake, Ons moet onze rendische kop gaan krijgen. So they jump in the horses and they go mooring out there into the badlands and mooring along and they check down there in the valley. And there's this red Indian oak walking by himself. So they gallop down the hill, they like, clap this oak on the head. Now Young's got his fucking saw out and he's busy sawing the Indian's head off like this. Now, Pete's standing behind and looking around. He looks on the top of the ridge here. He looks up. There's about 2,000 Red Indians just standing watching him. Like that. 
So he says, Jan, he says, fuck off, man, I'm just busy. He says, fucking Jan, you take me as fucking busy. Jan, man, take that, man. So Jan stands up and looks at these acts on the top of the ridge. He says, yes, this beat, he finna and gaan ons fucking drunk, wees. Ha, ha, ha.